please. Maybe um, five. Am I on? We're gonna go. Okay, come on now. Okay, here we go. <laughs>
Welcome everyone to the March 28th meeting of the Waterways Advisory Committee. I'm calling the meeting order. And now is the time for the roll call. Okay, uh, Victoria Liptak. Right here. Mark Neely. Mm. Uh, Carol Kwan. Here. Terrence Sanders. Present. Uh, Dr. Kevin C. Here. Uh, Art, 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 sure. Dikey. Art, 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 <laughs> and uh, Steve, Chair Steve Rubin. Here. And uh, Susie Murray is with us today. Is this our first meeting with you in this capacity? Uh, this time around, yes. <laughs> no, we filled in a few times. Before. Another items, of yeah. course. <laughs> and Crystal, introduce yourself and Michael. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Crystal Camp. I'm the admin secretary for planning. Um, this is Michael Wilroy. He's Hi. our senior administrative assistant for planning, but he is your recording secretary for WAC. Great. Well, welcome and thank you for being here as well. Um, I'm asked to, uh, well, first of all, uh, read a statement. Um, the city of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment, will not tolerate speech or actions that disrupt a public meeting or may be perceived as aggressive, demeaning, or harmful towards staff, an applicant team, or other meeting participants. Staff will be monitoring in the meeting and ensuring that everyone is participating respectfully. If staff determines that a meeting participant is acting in a disruptive or disrespectful manner, they will first be muted and then given a warning. If the behavior continues, they will be removed. If necessary, we may also immediately end the meeting. If participants have additional questions or concerns, they should reach out directly to the project planner or the applicant team. Okay, um, with that, uh, the first item here is approval of the uh, July 27 minutes. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at those? Um, is there any opposition to just approving those minutes as written? I, I didn't uh, attend, but um, the way we refer to when, um, and I don't have it in front of me, um, Dwayne DeWitt, that, that should be a public comment, it should say public comment, and then Dwayne DeWitt spoke on something, and it doesn't say that. Right, there you go. We catch. Thank you. With that addition, um, I just say, uh, Dean, that the uh, minutes are, are approved since there's no position. Um, okay, now is the time for public comments. Um, and these are items um, not on the agenda. So we're not taking public comments on um, item four, non agenda matters. So any person may address the oh, subcommittee on matters not listed on this agenda, but are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. And we do have, uh, this is also on Zoom, I assume. So we will potentially have people coming from the general public. Panel. Yes, uh, but no commenting on, on Zoom. Uh, any comments from anyone in the room? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> She was just waving at me. <laughs> we, were, we were at a conference show yesterday. <laughs> okay. Um, the uh, role of the Waterways Committee is to review development projects, both public and private. They're located adjacent to creeks and waterways for consistency with the goals, policies, and regulations for peak site development identified in the Santa Rosa General Plan. Zoning code design guidelines and citywide creek master plan. While the committee does not take formal action on projects, it does provide advisory comments to the decision making body. All development projects located adjacent to a creek or waterway are required to be reviewed by the WAC prior to proceeding through the entitlement process. And with that, um, we're going to have uh, committee reports, unless there's any comments on anything I've said so far. Um, so um, I'll give a brief um, request, and that is that we meet during the summer um, uh, for a tour of the Prince Memorial Greenway. It's a, of course, uh, right across the street, a vital part of our downtown creek system, bikeway system, and so on. And uh, I'd like to have that be an opportunity to discuss both the uh, potential for that uh, Creek project, as well as the challenges that are being faced in terms of restoration and uh, improvements to that project. So if that's okay, Susie, uh, I think 
You mentioned potentially June might work out if. That's just because I'm a little bit of a pansy when it comes to hot weather, but I'll, that'll be the one I'll, I'll favor, but I'll look at June, July, and August. Yeah. And also like to include, uh, open that up to staff to yeah, participate right. in the tour. I think it would be a good bonding experience as well as learning experience. Yeah, it'd be great so. to have Steve Brady there for sure and others who would I, yeah, be interested. I, I will invite Steve for sure, but I'm, I'm talking specifically about planners. Oh, yeah. yeah. And also there's the Creek uh, stewardship folks who are really vital to what's going on on the yeah. Creek, too, who do a great job. Oh, yeah. shoot. She had her hand up. Please. Um, can of worms. Is it worth getting someone from Park and Rec there also, since it is part of the park system? I can certainly ask. I'm asking. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to ask, too. Thank you. That's two asks. That's two. <laughs> and, then, and then maybe the... Um, Bicycle committee uh, <clears throat> might be, be nice to be invited. And then we'll need a barbecue and a full setup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had that wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I will invite um, Steve Brady and I will invite Scott Wilkinson oh, to, to participate. No guarantees that they'll make it. it I, you know, last time some of our planners did, some of our planners didn't. I'm probably going to draw the line there just because the, the yeah. gets really big. It's getting so, big. Yeah. 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 And we don't have a barbecue that size, so. Oh, I don't really <laughs> Darn, what are we doing? Good try. Um, okay, um, are there other uh, committee members who would like to give any reports? Yes. Yes. Um, so there was a, pub, I, I got like three things. There was a public notice, um, and when it printed out, it didn't print out very well, but it's about Dut, uh, a Dutton access to Santa Rosa Creek. Um, does anybody know about that? I saw the same notice in the newspaper Sunday. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm. I, it was a couple of days ago in in the paper. I could probably call it up. Um, Is that a copy of it? No, it, it's a very poor copy. When, Do you, does it have an uh, like a project number? Yeah, let me let me or, see. <laughs> Is it the um, ramp on the yes. west side? Yeah, so that's a project that's been in TPW for several years. Um, and we, what the project is that, you know, the ramp that's on the west side of the creek, so you can get from the creek and you ramp up to mm -hmm. them. Yeah. We're putting the same thing on the uh, west side. Okay. So that there's there's access up to Dutton on both sides. What is right. TPW? Transportation Public Works. Thank you. Could, could we maybe get some information about that our next meeting? Um, just a, maybe a diagram or a map or something that shows what we're going to be doing? Yeah, we might even have one online. Let me look and okay. I'll give you an update on my item. Okay, that's great. Um, and then the next thing is um, they're having um, a, a salmon restoration uh, conference going on right now the past three days. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where Claire and I were at yesterday. Um, and it was at the Laguna de Santa Rosa Foundation. And there were a lot of speakers. I have I have the agenda. I'll pass it around for anybody to look at. Um, San, City of Santa Rosa was, was there um, big time. Uh, Sean McNeil was one of the main presenters. And when we got to the point where we started talking about um, who's going to lead the, the effort for the restoration of the Laguna de Santa Rosa, which is what this conference, the, yesterday's conference was all about. Sean talked about how difficult it is for agencies to work with other agencies and that it's really good when there's a, a kind of a neutral, um, um, like, like the Laguna Foundation, we're kind of trying to pivot to get the, I'm on the board there to, to do that. Um, but the reason I'm bringing it up here is they, Sean talked about how we got the efforts done with the city of Santa Rosa, with Santa Rosa Creek and the Creek um, master plan. And it was because of a citizen group and they didn't name names, but it was this guy right here that, that did that. And, and so I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, he didn't mention you, but I know it was you. And it was about the effort that you did that, enabled us to to do as much as we've done with the creeks here in Santa Rosa. Given that, um, and since we do have a strong tie to the Laguna de Santa Rosa, our creeks empty in there, we own, the city owns property um, there, um, we're completely involved is perhaps 
we can have have a, a short presentation about the restoration efforts here at this committee, yeah, yeah, just to really just great, kind man. of get us all uh, to understand what's going on. I'm going to pass it around. Come you. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up. That's a great idea. I, I do want to say there were a few more people involved. There were. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you probably didn't mention like names. A couple hundred, but okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, did you finish? Yeah, that was it. Thank you. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, at the last Board of Community Services slash Park and Rec meeting, we were talking about um, future plantings at a park that's being revitalized. And one of our members who is Native American mentioned when we talk about um, plantings, and I'm always harping for habitat garden plantings in our schemes here with developers, uh, she mentioned that um, there's actually Native American um, indigenous people connections to a lot of the plants that we talk about. And perhaps as we continue to push forward habitat gardens in projects that we review to encourage, especially when there's public access, I'm thinking specifically about the medical complex that's planned over by Brookwood, simple mm -hmm. signage that both acknowledges the habitat garden and perhaps carefully worded um, indigenous people roots to um, a number of plants that hopefully are going in. Noted, I, I'm gonna have to dig a little bit into that and see, I don't know. I don't know who would know that information. So maybe I can get a contact I'm, name from you and I'd be I'm reaching out also so that at the Rural Cemetery, we can not only put habitat garden names, but unfortunately, I only go back to the pioneers and I name things based on 1850 white people, which is right. very short sighted of me. So I'm, I'm Yes, we're learning. We'll it's an together. evolution. We'll <laughs> we're learning, yeah. Um, and I also know the uh, the landscaper for that project. Um, <clears> and <throat> she works over at Carlisle Macy, Macy, and I think that she would be very interested in hearing some of that information and probably enthusiastic. I can't say the developer would be, but um, for her, I think that she would probably be very enthusiastic about mm -hmm. researching it and getting it in there. So Thank you. Her, her th that's what she thrives on. So. Thank you. Yes, Terry. Um, I don't know if anyone got a chance to, or has had a chance to visit the cannery project. Uh, that came before mm -hmm. the, uh, this yeah, committee. And I, I got a chance to see it. And yeah, you know, I, it's great to see that project going in and what it yeah, got a chance to sit from one of the apartments. Mm -hmm. and the things that we talk about is eyes on the creek, right? There are eyes, there are gonna be eyes on that creek. And lucky them, the view that they have mm. in that creek. I happen to see it on a rainy day, so the creek was showing off. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a spectacular. So if you go mm. uh, to that, you should. You should. I, Great. I would love to. How would that uh, transpire? Well, it was easier for, for me because LSR just gets me into everything. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm sure that if you wanted to, as a member of the WAC, um, make that happen mm -hmm. because even the work that they're doing right on the uh, garden to the pathway on the creek is beautifully mm -hmm. done. Do you know, would you send a common letter of introduction or sure. something? Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. I can also contact the, the tour guide now yeah. if she would be willing to do that. Everybody that was involved in that project, myself included, is very very proud of that project. So it looks showing amazing. it off, yeah, showing it off is. I mean, I can't, I can't wait for that ribbon. But I, I think it'd be wonderful <laughs> to particularly look at the interface between the project and the creek. This yeah. is my, you know, our jurisdiction. But uh, mm -hmm. I have watched that building go up. Very impressive. So that building when uh, that went through our SB thirty five process, so it, it was not brought to any boards or commissions. Mm -hmm. In advance, it's it's visited afterwards after it started construction, and a lot of people had questions. Mm -hmm. But the state really pulled the public process completely out of that to get mm -hmm. affordable housing built. That is a one hundred percent affordable housing project, which is again why so many involved. It's a beautiful project, and it's affordable, and it's a home that people can be proud of. So. Susie, are there dates on either um, letters of acceptance or occupancy 
projections for that project yet? I think their occupancy is is 2000, later 2024. I don't know that for a fact. That was a target. Um, I'd have to check on the building permits and, and let you know for sure. But I'm sure that Michelle Gervais, who led that tour, would know the answer. So right. save your questions and I will I will definitely reach out to her. So. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a report they'd like to give? How about the um, Planning and Development Department? Is there anything on your end, Susie? Well, let's see. I'll call <laughs> everything I just said. And I did, I wanted to uh, say to everybody here, um, I this is a temporary appointment for me. I'm filling in as the uh, staff liaison here. Um, if you send me an email and I don't respond to you within a day or two, please call me. Those, I answer my phone calls. I'm, if I'm at my desk, I answer. If I'm not at my desk, I return phone calls. Steve can attest to that. And I'm getting inundated with emails right now. So I don't want anybody to feel like I'm intentionally ignoring them. Um, so that is one thing. And that kind of addresses my, um, you know, staffing. We're, we're short staffed right now. We are, uh, yeah, we're doing, we're doing the best we can. We will have a couple of items coming to the board, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the committee in the next Month or two, April or and or May. Um, uh, one is a housing project right along. Gosh, what is the the creek? This is bad. I should know the creek. It's right at the uh, down along Bellevue. So is that Col 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 Colgan Col Creek? Thank you. It is Colgan Creek. Yeah. So it's right adjacent to Colgan Creek, and so um, that that uh, the the planner is prepping that packet for you now. Um, and so I suspect that'll come in April. Um, and that, that. Which portion of Coleman? It's, uh, it's on, it's west of, it's west of Dutton Meadow. Uh -huh. It's west of Dutton Meadow and north of the creek. So. Oh, okay. You know, so it's, for, it's, no, there, it's, there's a bunch of housing units. That, there's mm -hmm. going to be more. Yeah. Yeah. But and it's never, a higher density housing project, but that's about those, all I know. Those never came before us. And so, um. This one's right adjacent to the creek. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, oh, so it's at the furthest southernmost most point. Then, right. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, the southernmost point, and, yeah. and it go, goes up from there. Yeah. So it's it fills in the gap between um, Bel what is it? Uh, Bellevue Estates, something. Yeah, there's there's, there's a there's trunk a, where yeah, all the eucalyptus a, trees were. Yeah. 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 And I don't know if they're still there. They won't. If they are, they will be removed as part of that project. So Where is that from Elsie Allen? Is it it's west? Just, east, it's just east, east, east. Elsie Allen. Okay. Allen. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just east. So so stay tuned. There, there's some projects coming your way. Are there a lot of changes to the creek side? I don't. Else? I do not know. Okay. The, I don't have any of the details on the project. I just know that there will be a project coming your way. Great. Okay. So. Okay. Um, one comment on the agenda. Um, I wonder if we can't break out head reports and say planning, economic development department, because whenever I look at that, I think pedestrian. pedestrian yeah. Oh, yeah. I wonder if we could probably just break that out in the future. I don't think that would be a problem. I know it's, it's, like a, lot it's, of, it's a lot of work. Care of I know right you're now. understaffed. I know, but yeah. it's a, I think we can a joke. That's that a joke. Four <laughs> words. <laughs> Okay, um, how about the water department? Is there anyone here for the water department? Yeah, Claire. Can you speak to that? Yes, please. Yeah, see everybody. Um, so normally Steve Brady or Kyle Spomberg from our team attend, as uh, committee member Jackie pointed out, actually this week is the SRF conference, um, which stands for the Salmonid Restoration Federation. Um, so we've been at different things all week and they are number of seminars today, um, but it's been a really interesting week. Um, it's, you know, we're talking about the, what we had yesterday, talking about the Laguna, the Santa Rosa, and some loading, and, you know, efforts to, to remediate and what we can all do in the different spheres that we're working in. Um, and to what you were saying, um, Member Plant earlier, I attended a fantastic presentation on Monday about communication and engagement specifically with tribal groups, um, using tribal knowledge, getting involved much earlier in the process. And, you know, 
entities have typically gotten, and not just in the sphere of regulatory requirements, but um, you know, maybe really collaborating from the get go. Um, and then also on Tuesday of this week, um, Steve and Kyle and Aaron from our team led a tour of the city of Santa Rosa restoration projects. Um, we had great attendance for about 30 people. Um, they took them down to Prince of Royal Greenway. Um, we took them to Streamside and we also took them to Florida Creek. So it was the whole day um, and just we got a really great response and really got to highlight some of the, the great work that the city staff are doing. So um, that's why they're not here today. Um, um, going back to the indigenous plants, would you have resources that I could tap into or that Susie could tap into to um, get some identification? Yeah, you know, possibly. I would like to be a part of that conversation because we're doing similar, trying to make <clears throat> similar connections, especially for uh, space three of the lower Colgan restoration mm -hmm. project. We're really trying to increase because, as you know, that's near Alcy Allen High School, trying to get the right. Um, indigenous plants um, and artwork. And so I think we have a similar need um, and, and are in the, in the same point in the process. So yeah, um, I'm going to let you lead that. <laughs> you are much more involved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Could you keep, do you have my contact information? Keep me looped in and, and I'm wearing not only my waterways hat, but also my park and rec board, the board of community services hat for that. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Well, I, I'd be very interested in, in hearing a presentation before this committee of, of how the salmon restoration is going, especially as it impacts the creeks. Mm -hmm. I think the more we know about it, then as we look at projects, we'll have a little insight into what, what the needs are uh, in terms of creek preservation or development or whatever. Um, and we might loop that into some of these projects. Who I don't, who knows? So yeah. anyway, I was look down the creek and hope to see salmon, but I never have. <laughs> Hopefully one of these days. <clears throat> it, it'd be interesting adding to that what the effects of the restoration of Santa Rosa Creek did in terms of salmon population. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going back many years now, um, 30 years or so, but still I think it's important information so we know about restoration and what it can accomplish. Right. So it'd be great. Thank you. Sure. Anything else on that? Um, no more questions on that. How about uh, Sonoma Water? Is there anyone here representing Sonoma Water? Water do, agency? Do we, do we want them to be more representative here or just wait for them to have issues? Mm -hmm. uh, That's a hard one to answer, but what, what's your thought? Well, I, I'm on the Zone 1A advisory committee, oh. so and we meet next week. And then um, another plug for the Laguna de Santa Rosa Foundation, Grant Davis is going to be our... Our, our person at our fundraising event next, tickets are on sale um, next month. Um, and he's going to be the one that's going to be, he's going to be, be doing the Mark McGuire thing. Have you ever seen that where he gets out and he's talking for um, trying to sell stuff? And so <clears throat> I can leverage him a little bit, maybe, but I, I'm not sure if there's a, if there's an ongoing reason for Santa Rosa water or if it just needs to be when they have an issue or, or if we do see, I, I like having them here, but I, I just want to be able to discuss this appropriately. Um, there's no reason we can't invite them to make a presentation on um, issues that affect the role of our committee because so much of the city is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, rest or uh, creeks that have been uh, channelized and yeah. so on and other issues with water. Okay. Sure. Can can I ask if you have a contact name there? I'm not. I I don't know who has attended in the past. It's very right. Huh? I don't know. Okay. Steve it's Brady so may be a good one to ask. Okay. Steve Brady, oh, yeah. biologist. Okay. I don't know. If you have a suggestion, please. I I, I don't because it, it's been so long since we've seen them. <laughs> Is it more? Are you thinking more of in the planning sphere or the creek maintenance? Because we we work with them all the time, but there's you know depending on the we're talking about, but patient management or planning or easements. Um, wondering if you have, because I'm happy to, to work with Steve and find the right person, um, but I want to make sure that it is the person that addresses. Yeah, I think Kevin's question was the first that perhaps we need to address uh, regarding the you know, salmon population and so on. Okay. But uh, there, of course, are other places where we interact. Um, 
Thanks. Okay. Because if there is a start, yeah, because there isn't an ongoing need, we should take them off the agenda right. um, and bring them in just when they need to be. That way, it doesn't look like they're always absent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, any comments by the general public on this uh, item? Okay. I could, um, if it's appropriate now, I can give a more thorough update on that Dutton um, street connection. I don't know when that's most appropriate, but now I I think normal, I think that should probably be agendized mm -hmm. rather than just giving an update now. I'm going to say that's normal when we have a yeah. review authority, that's how it's done. So I think having that agendized for maybe the next meeting and we'll invite you back, okay. I, if that's all right. Okay. It should be agendized so members of the public yeah. are aware of it and can listen in. So that's the purpose. Thank you, though, for uh, suggesting that. Um, okay. Me, yes. Um, on that note, I saw it in the Sunday paper. I think it's coming before um, a different city board. In the next yeah, is it? Of I had a note to ask. Is it a public hearing or a uh, like a council item? It's a coming? council public hearing because we're in the CEQA process right now. So mm -hmm. the public comment period on the environmental document ends on April 1st. So perhaps send us a link to that as a reminder to it's, that city council meeting. It's, do you know the date of the city council meeting? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with the notice that was posted and it didn't sound like it was real legible. Our art has mm -hmm. it. I know he does. <laughs> when I get it. So I'm going to say, um, I will encourage, I've done this with several boards, Sign up for Gov Delivery. You'll get those council agendas and know when these types of projects are going. and And I will uh, try to work with Tarina to get an update when that's when that's coming through, and and um, send y'all a link. So, but don't count on my memory. Okay, <laughs> really sign up for Gov Delivery. I can't emphasize that enough. And if you're thinking it's sneaking up on you and you, and you haven't heard anything. Call me. <laughs> it was excruciating trying to get anything from the public notice out of the paper that mm. actually went through to anything other than dead ends. Really? Mm. Oh, well, that's interesting. I will look. Is that just isolated to this week? You don't know. So they, on our website, on our website, and we can do a demonstration for you where there is a there is a clipboard in the lower left hand of the of, of the primary, you know, the, the front page of the city of Santa Rosa warehouse. Or actually, I think it's on just about every page at the bottom. It's a little red clipboard. If you click on that, you will find agendas for every meeting, including this agenda. And if people are interested, they can go onto the agenda and there's links to all the plans, there's links to the minutes, there's links to okay. you know every <clears throat> proposed resolutions. Um, that, um, applicant and staff presentations, so you can really see. For me, I'm a visual person, so that's real helpful when I'm curious about what some another department's doing, or mine for that matter. So, I encourage if you want me to walk you through that process, and then you can share the news with all your followers. What, um, what really <laughs> interests me, since the Press Democrat is the place of public, I understand notice, that's the link that should work for anyone who chooses to look, look. and that that legistar link that i'm talking about is what we're in a transition right now of trying i'm trying to get that link to be up there so people can get to their agenda they see the zoom information if they don't want to speak mm -hmm. as well as all of the um, supporting documentation so i will definitely check into that i i understand so i hear what you're saying it's thank you <clears throat> Okay, hey, um, unless there are any other questions, comments, we're going to move on to one quick question for yes. Susie. You said there were two projects coming up. I think you mentioned one. I think there are two. I said a couple of projects coming up. We're getting much busier. Mm -hmm. um, we've gone through a lot of pre-application. Mm -hmm. We have a development review. There's a lot of pre-application stuff that happens. Oh, stuff that and that's, yeah. yeah, that's where we're seeing it. So, okay. so stay tuned. I. When I say coming up, I, this one I know. I know we've actually seen that we have the project plans in, and it's early on in the review. The one down on, on Bellevue, and I know that um, it's coming to the board. I know that the planner talked to me about it mm -hmm. yesterday or the day before. Thank you, Brian. 
big blur. <laughs> okay, the first public meeting topic we have is the Santa Rosa Active Transportation Plan update. And we have, I believe, <clears throat> Torina Wilson. Is that correct? Come on over and Share. All right, you guys, do we have a PowerPoint, you guys? The, the, um, oh, oh, Susie, you have the um, a flash drive in your... Oh, okay, so am I the PowerPoint person? That's always scary. Well, <laughs> you can slide You can slide the laptop over for her because this has it so that she can just... Um, and you can share from there. Yeah, so she can share the screen and all the other things. Okay. It should already be loaded for each... You know how to get it over? No, but it's open. Are you coming over here to rescue me? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Good. Nice. All right. There we go. Great. It transitioned. Wonderful. So my name is Torina Wilson. I'm the city's transportation planner. I've only been in this position for about 10 months, but I grew up in West County, lived in Santa Rosa again for several years. So it's like I came home, which was fine with me. <laughs> um, so my job, I, I believe that some of you probably interfaced with my predecessor, who was Nancy Adams. So that's the position that I'm in. This job is really focused on improving the overall transportation network, which obviously includes things like creek trails. Um, most of my job really focuses on improving bicycle and pedestrian access. And that's you know primarily what I focus on. Um, and the city has a long range plan um, that we have had since, I don't know, I think the early 2000s that we periodically update. And I'm here today because we're doing an update to that plan and it's called the active transportation plan. So this is an update. The last time we did it was in 2018. That document's called the 2018 Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. We're doing a renaming because bicycle and pedestrian also leaves out folks who maybe use a wheelchair or their scooters or their skateboards or other ways that people get around. So it's a little bit more inclusive. This plan is this update is going to go farther than we have in last plans, uh, specifically because the guidance from the federal government, from state government, and just best management practices, we're really learning that when you're planning for an active transportation network, you need to be planning for all ages and abilities. We don't want there to be... <laughs> Wait, one sec. That's, That's me. me. I'm trying to show you. There you go. Are we good now? We're good. We're good. Now. Okay. Me. Sorry. So we are learning that in our active transportation network, we want it to be available for everybody, right? We don't want to preclude anybody from being able to move about their business within a city. And in our past plans, we try to do that a little bit, but now there's a lot more standards and guidance coming out from other sources. Um, and also just best management practices so we can start being more aggressive. So this plan, we really are looking at it being um, more aggressive and planning for low stress facilities. Those types of facilities are creek trails, right? Where you're away from vehicles or if you put in um, a bike lane on an arterial road, making sure there's more separation or there's some sort of delineator um, and making sure that we close gaps and sidewalks, things like that. There is gonna be a very um, robust public outreach campaign and we're definitely gonna be focusing on equity priority communities because a lot of times in those communities, there's a higher concentration of folks who depend on active transportation, but also public transportation. And if you think about it, all public transit trips begin or end with active transportation because you've got to get there, right? Um, so that's going to be a, an important focus and I'm going to get to that in a second. Can I ask a quick question? I've never sure. heard that phrase. Um, equity priority um, community. Mm -hmm. um, 
so funny. There's these like phrases that you deal with every day and then you say them like everybody knows what that is. Right. So um, we have a metropolitan planning organization called um, MTC, yeah. Metropolitan Transportation Commission. And they have adopted what they call equity priority communities. So they've coalesced a ton of data and identified places in the nine Bay Area counties where equity is an issue. And there's a ton of things that go into that. So they look at things like um, income, race, um, age. So seniors can be considered an equity priority community. Um, uh, locations where Spanish is the primary language. So it's places where there's historic, like they're disenfranchised. The investment hasn't really happened in there. Um, Santa Rosa has a ton of equity priority communities. There's a map online. If you just type in that phrase, you, it'll pop up. Um, and I would say the one with like the highest concentration for us is the Roseland area. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of like the type of community we're talking about. So does this correlate um, well with the portrait of Sonoma County? Uh, you mean in terms of how many we have? No, or? the areas, the areas that are identified. Yeah, there's, it's all over the county. I mean, does um, it correlate? Um, I guess this isn't a question for your, um, so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, it should, it should, the data that, that is used to create those areas are same data sources that we use for internal processes and the same that like county would use, same as like county Marin would use. So it's, it should be pretty standardized. Um, but there's always nuance when you have these like regional agencies coming up with these, you know, overlays all over. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so this slide shows you the general scope of work. It follows, it's very typical to what we see in any long range plan really. Right now we're working on task two and task three. So we're doing a ton of existing conditions data and we're also gearing up for a ton of public engagement that I'll talk about in a moment. Um, we have working draft goals and objectives. I'll go over those in a moment. Task five is when we're going to coalesce tasks um, one through four and say, here's all the things that we heard. Here are the proposed project and programs that we can put in place to address those concerns. Um, one thing I think I didn't make super clear is that the goal of this plan is that it's a blueprint for all of the projects and programs we'll implement for the next five or six years. Um, and those are, again, active transportation. So sidewalks, bike lanes, um, access to transit, things like that. Um, one thing I do highlight on this slide is the thing that I'm personally most excited about. It's a little bit unique to the consultant that we have doing this project, and it's called active trip potential. So one thing with transportation planning is we can put in infrastructure, right, so that people can walk in bike places, but there's also a human behavior component to it. And so this is a exercise that the consultant's going to go through where they will identify areas in the city where there's a concentration of trips happening by vehicle, that we have a higher likelihood of um, having people transition to walking or biking. So it's usually trips that are a mile or less, right? Because people don't want to get super sweaty if they're like biking or walking to their destination. So that's going to be really interesting because it's going to be really a, a really telling for the relationship between land use like Susie works with and transportation because obviously they're just you know they're married to one another so I'm excited to see that I think it's gonna be really interesting this is a slide of our working draft vision and goals I'm not going to read this whole slide I want to highlight the fact that it says working draft because even though I have all of this information on the slide even last week this changed a little bit as we're learning new things about the project and what we want to have in it I'll read out the vision. So Santa Rosa is a city where the active transportation network is robust and accessible to the entire community, regardless of age and ability. To be accessible for all ages and abilities, the active transportation network will be safe, comfortable, convenient, complete, and connected. And then to achieve an accessible active transportation network, Santa Rosa will. And then there's a list of criteria and it's things like Vision zero, so reducing collisions, um, making sure that there's safe routes to school, making sure that our system is equitable, that it serves everybody, especially those who depend on it, and a ton of um, of other items. But they're they're not very controversial items. It's all things that we want, right? We want kids to be safe. We want the elderly to be able to get to their doctor's appointments, things like that. So as part of this plan, we have, like I said, a really robust uh, approach to community engagement. This is 
personally my bread and butter before I worked um, at the city. I was in transportation, but my favorite part of my job was always community engagement because I can't do my job well if I don't know what the community wants, right? I can't, that's just not possible. So we wrote a community engagement plan, which is essentially a roadmap for how we're going to get all the feedback that we need. We're gonna be doing engagement in two phases. And right now we're in phase one. We're still pretty early in the process. And that phase is discovery. So we're going out to the community and we're saying, where do you currently move around? How is it working for you? How is it not working for you? How can we improve it? And then once we have all that information, we'll move into phase two, where we say, here's everything we heard in phase one. Here's how we propose to address all of those things. Did we get it right? Um, and then we'll make some tweaks from there. Throughout the whole community engagement process, so both phases, we have a project webpage that will be live. We have an online interactive map, um, and that is gonna be more focused on phase one. Uh, we have meetings with advisory bodies. So obviously I'm here right now. Um, I, this I think is my fourth or fifth one that I've done. And you know, I'm just doing the road show, so I'm going everywhere. Um, and I will be back here, by the way, I should, I should say that. So as I move on, I'll, I'll be coming to this um, committee several times. We're also doing a series of pop-up events. So pop-up events are more informal community engagement where we go where people already are gathering. It's your standard, put up a table, put up an easy up, and then you're surveying people. We're gonna do a ton of those. Uh, we'll have a more uh, formal public workshop, one in each phase. That's the kind where we invite you to us. We have you know easels in a room and we have snacks and we'll have um, free childcare and, and things like that. And then we're also having stakeholder meetings. So those are where we're personally inviting people that have a vested interest. So it's it's it could be bike advocacy groups. We have a whole list. It's a pretty long list, but it could also be folks who work at various nonprofits who serve communities that we don't always interact with. This is uh, our branding and logo. I actually, I brought stickers that I turned the logo into, so if you want to pass them around. Um, I also have cards. I'm going to leave these with Susie because I know not everyone likes to take cards. But um, so one thing that's really important about my job and my division is that we have a presence in the community. A ton of our other departments do, right? So like planning and economic development, they're interacting with people all the time through the general plan process or other processes. As I have gotten familiar with my position in um, public works, I see that our transportation division is not as like in the public as I would personally like us to be. So that's something I'm trying to focus on as much as I can. So when we created a logo for this plan, I made sure that it's not, it doesn't say specifically active transportation plan because that means after I have the plan adopted, I still have this logo that I can use for everything. And it's more of a brand for the department. So these stickers, I can still be passing out right after the plan's adopted. So that's just a, um, a letting you know why we have that. And I will say we have like about 20% of people who don't understand the logo. So I'm going to explain it. Um, so our tagline is active Santa Rosa. And the reason that we picked that is because the word active is really easily translated into Spanish because it's active, activa. So you only have to change the last letter. So that's why the last letter looks different than the other oh, ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny because like most people get it, but then some people don't and I never know. So I always want to just explain that real quick. Um, okay, so who's the audience for public engagement? I feel silly having to talk about this because it's everybody, right? There's nobody that we're going to say, I don't want to talk to you about the active transportation <laughs> network in the city of Santa Rosa. That's just not going to happen. But there are certain groups that we need to engage with and we need to make sure that we are. So on the left-hand side, I have a general list of people who we definitely wanna to talk to. We definitely wanna to talk to residents of equity priority communities. Uh, we definitely wanna to talk to people who rely on active transportation and also public transportation. Yeah, because walking and biking, you have to get to the station somehow. And then we also wanna to talk to people who would consider active transportation trips. So people who currently drive, but they would consider not driving if certain situations are true, right? Because if I can easily try to convert a trip, I want to know how I can do that. And I'm going to work to do that. There is a fourth bullet. So there are people who will never consider walking or biking. They're, that's going to be true in any community. 
I still want to talk to those people. It's not that I, you know, I'm going to ignore them. Um, especially because if we have somebody driving on our streets, we want to, you know, make sure they're compassionate to the fact that some people are going to walk in bike. Um, but at the same time, that's not our main focus audience because I want to build infrastructure so that people can use it, right? On the right-hand side of this slide, I have a list of various demographics of, you know, folks in the community that I really do want to interact with. Again, this is not exhaustive. There's nobody I don't want to talk to, but I want to be sure that I talk to folks who don't have access to a vehicle or folks who are disabled and maybe can't drive or people in these equity priority communities. Seniors is another big one. Youth is another big one, right? Parents aren't going to send their kids to school on a bike if they have to like be on a tiny shoulder where people are going 50 miles an hour. It's not going to happen. So there's a ton of people that we'll be communicating with throughout the process. And this is my last slide. Um, there's no like action to take. I'm just here if you have any questions um, and I can go ahead and answer those. There is a way that you can help us. Um, we're gearing up for a ton of public outreach, which is going to occur in April and May. Our flyer is going to be ready in like the next week, week and a half. And when, you know, we have a, a really in-depth community engagement plan. So that is going to be just blasted out everywhere. You'll get a copy of it. So the way that you can help is to spread that information. Anytime you hear that there's a public event happening, um, please let your networks, friends and family, your businesses, whatever it is, let them know that it's happening because I can't, I can't make sure the plan's representative of the community if I don't hear from them, right? Um, we do have a project webpage. If you type in active transportation plan, it'll, it'll pop up. It should be the first um, one that you see. And then there's a, if you see on the screen, there's like a blue subscribe button. You can sign up for um, an email list as well. And you can encourage people to sign up for that. Uh, I think that's what I have here for questions. Well, thank you for your um, introduction to the topic. Sounds like you'll be back here again. But I, I was wondering, is this the time to bring up specific uh, segments potentially that could be included in the plan? Or is that something that would be better covered the next time you're here? Because um, I have a couple ideas. Yeah, <laughs> it would be better the next time that I'm here. I certainly take any input at any time. So I would never stop you from doing so. Yeah. Um, when I'm here next, it will, let me think. It will probably be after the public outreach has wrapped up. And so I can tell you the type of things that we heard and where we think we're going um, in the plan, like what types of projects and programs we'll see in the plan. So what I hope and what I'm encouraging everybody to do is for any ideas you have of where improvements should happen, I would really like for those folks to participate either in a public, like come to one of our pop-ups or our workshop, or there's going to be an online interactive survey where you can like zoom into a map and you can put an icon and say, here's what my issue is here. Or um, there's also in the map an ability to draw a route as well. So there's a couple things that you can do in the mapping. Um, all of those comments will become public record in the document itself. And that will be what we use to come up with the projects and programs. Yeah. Any questions or anything anybody can yes. ask? Uh, Carol. Um, are you going to have a pop-up at Earth Day? Yes, that right. is actually going to be our launch. Perfect. Um, social media, I know there's positives and negatives, but um, asking Park and Rec to share it, asking Waterways, and asking us and other um, people, I don't have a ton of followers, not as many as some people I know, <laughs> but to share it, it's free, get people engaged and get different city groups, uh, city agencies that may have a uh, social media presence to help you. And see you at Earth Day. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And Wednesday night markets, I assume as well. Yeah, we're gonna do the one, um, the Public Works Week one, so May 22nd, I think. And there's a, so there's a ton of other events. We're gonna be at um, Cinco de Mayo. We're gonna be at the Pride Parade. We're gonna be at, um, there's other specific like planned events that we're gonna be at, but then I'm also uh, working with a ton of nonprofits right now to go to events that they already have. So there's a um, speaker series with the Common Ground Society. There's Earl Baum Center for the Blind. There's a ton of other places where I'm setting up some more like focused, trying to chat with people. 
Yeah, uh, um, real quick on two things, but Earth Day is Monday the 22nd or when are we celebrating it here in the city? Celebrating on April 20th and it's at oh. Courthouse Square from 12 to four. Okay. Yes. And then um, Terry brought up the cannery earlier and that's right associated. I think they're called PDAs mm -hmm. um, yeah. with the, the smart train. Have, are you coordinating with smart about working backwards from smart into the city and, and yeah. where issues might be with, with the people or are you? With everybody. Yeah. Okay. Anyone who's willing to listen to us, we're coordinating with. So, so um, yeah. Specifically smart. You're absolutely smart. Yeah. Okay. Um, we work also with like the city bus program, Sonoma County transit, um, Sonoma County transportation authority with the County regarding like their County campus and okay. connection there, things like that. So, okay, great. We have a, a long list. There's a ton of people. Involved. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Harry, I just have a question on, on your second to last slide. It says, who is the audience? Yeah. And I guess what I'm wondering is if you're you're looking for an audience to to share what? I mean, like I'm putting in a bike lane, I'm putting in a whatever it may be that yeah. you know you're working on. Yeah. When you're meeting with this, who is the audience? What you're sharing what? That depends on the phase of outreach. So in this first phase, I'm going to them and I'm I'm pretty much kind of saying what I said to you is here's what my role is, here's what the city's responsibility is in maintaining this network, and how can I help you? That's the first phase. It's asking people, what trips do you take? Where do you go? Are there gaps in the sidewalk? Are there, is there a bike facility where, you know, you need to get to the grocery store, but the bike facility drops and then all of a sudden you're in the lane of traffic? Or mm -hmm. I want to know places where, you know, if somebody is riding along on their bike and they feel unsafe, so they take a detour. Mm -hmm. I also want to know those things because yeah. then I think, why are we taking the detour? Mm, like what's going wrong sure, there? Sure. Um, then I'm going to take all of that information plus the existing conditions that the consultant is creating. And I'm going to say, here are all of the projects and programs that I think are going to address these issues that we heard. And then we're going back again. So we're going to say, here's that list. Here's what we heard and what we think we're going to do to address it. And then that's where we ask, did we get it right? So you told me, that this bike facility drops right here, or you ride on this bike facility, but you wouldn't send your kids to it. If I did X, Y, Z, would you send your kids on that? Um, and then see where, where that gets us. And we'll do some tweaks at that point. Sure. And I guess my last question is, I, it says that you're gonna be, you know, general characteristics, residents of uh, equity priority communities, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There's also, non-equity priority communities that yes. also use mm -hmm. bikes and yeah. also would like to have that sort of interface. Yes. So that's also going there as well, right? Absolutely. So we want to speak with everybody. The reason that we have an emphasis on equity priority communities, there's a couple of reasons. One is historical, just disenfranchising. Just so, you know, uh, transportation and other investments don't always happen in low-income neighborhoods, especially in Roseland. There's kind of an iffy thing because it wasn't our land for so long and we inherited this and mm -hmm. I wasn't here for that. So I don't know how that whole process went through, but so there's a lot of things that happen, need to happen specifically there. Another reason that we focus on them is because there's like historical mistrust of city government mm -hmm. and for, you know, really valid reasons too. And so we, for so many years haven't really heard from that community because either we're not there or if we are there, they don't really want to talk with us all the time. And so we need to, through these plans, make sure that we are very pointed to make sure that we're out there because if we don't get those voices, we can't know what that we need to do. On, on that subject, um, I was on the Roseland Annexation Steering Committee and the city hired a consultant for the outreach and yeah. one of the things, and I don't know what you guys are planning, but it, it'd be good um, a recommendation for you to go back and look what they did. Um, one of the things was they, they in consideration of childcare issues and people working, mm -hmm. they, they had um, where, where they set up for the, for the meetings, they had childcare available and then there were meals and so they were like a potluck or, or some type of meal. So people weren't missing their dinner or weren't able mm -hmm. or not able to feed their families. And that it wasn't like 
they piled in from Roseland, but it, it we thought it might have helped. Mm -hmm. um, anyhow, just an idea. Yeah, they just did that for the general plan update too. There was a workshop that was Spanish first. It was all Spanish. And then if people wanted English translation, then that would be available there. And um, there was always tacos and there was childcare. So, and I helped with some of those workshops and I saw that too, that people were much more likely to attend. Um, another thing we're, so we're gonna do those things. And another one is um, also at the general plan workshops, they offered uh, a one day free bus pass for people who attended. So yeah. if somebody has to ride the bus to that location, they got a free bus pass, mm -hmm. um, which they could use. I think you could redeem it at any time really. So you could do the same day or next day. And I think that was also something that was successful. So right. we're doing that again. There were a lot of components. I, I remember going to one, there were like games, there were coloring books, yeah. stuff in English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your budget is, but um, they threw literally an overwhelming amount of stuff on the wall to see who would engage from which approach. Yeah, totally. That's a really interesting thing is like how to get people into your booth. We don't have a crazy budget. We'll have the stickers. We're getting pencils. We're getting little stress balls that all have the logo on it. And then I was thinking one thing that, I've learned through engagement that I do is that if you can like trap the kids for a second and keep them interested, the parents have to stay, right? Because <laughs> parents won't engage if their kids just like running them up. Um, and so uh, we don't have official coloring books, but I can easily go into mm -hmm. Word. And I was thinking I'd create something like um, draw what you think of when you think of biking and walking and then see if I can get some kids to draw some pictures. And then that'd be just super cool for public works to have, right? You could have a wall of like cute little kid drawings. Mm -hmm. on, on that note, get it out to the elementary schools. And yeah. it's a school project. Yeah. I think some of the outreach for the stationery was done at schools. Yes. Yeah. We have a um, real good resource. Yeah, we have uh, the Santa Rosa Bicycle Coalition, or sorry, Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. They have a arm that does Safe Routes to School, mm -hmm. and we work quite a bit with them. Um, and so we plan to send all of our materials to them to distribute to all of the schools. It gets kind of iffy because once it gets to the school, you're relying on the principal or whoever that contact is to then distribute because we don't have like a you know, a roster of every parent email. <laughs> um, so it's, it's interesting. Yeah. But that's a, that's a good point. I think this is great. Kevin, you had a question. Yes. Uh, like, like Steve, I have lots of um, ideas and I do a lot of biking around town. So a lot of those detours you're talking about, mm -hmm. I use those and I would love to give that feedback. May I do so now? And where do I where do I go to provide some of those comments right away? Yeah, you can do so now. I can write them down. Um, I saw my card went around. You can always contact me at any time. You can send an email. Um, and so I think what I encourage people to do is if you have comments, especially in a body like this, to repeat your comments later too. So I can certainly take them down at any time right now, email later on. Um, but when we have the survey out or when we're doing these pop-up events or these workshops, also coming to one of those, because also the more we hear the same comment, the more we realize, oh, that's really important. Mm. So if one community member says, this is a detour I sometimes take, it's like, okay, well, we can think about that. But if a hundred people over here are saying, I need this intersection to be better, we're like, oh, okay, we need to look at that intersection mm. now. So also repeating is always helpful. Okay, good. Well, I... I think one of the main priorities for me, and I ride the creek trails a lot, and the creek trails are, for the most part, excellent. Mm -hmm. And I come from the Southwest, ride through Roseland. Um, it's the connectivity between those creek trails, yeah. you know, north-south. It's the north-south routes. Because I'll ride Colgan Creek or Roseland Creek as far as I can, and then I'm trying to get up to Joe Rodota Trail. And mm -hmm. that is always the dicey part, especially mm -hmm. now because it's hard to access Joe Rodota in Roseland. Um, it's mostly fenced off. Like it, around. Stopped, it stops at the Basswell Road, right? But, and then you have to kind of work way. You kind of, I, yeah. I, yeah, getting yeah. from Sebastopol Road to Joe Rodota, it's often, it's used, most of the stretches are fenced off. There's some streets yeah. across now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, around Mitote um, and that new Poppy Bank building, that, you know, that's all fenced off. So anyway, just in general, I think it's that those north, south. I loved what you said about the, the low stress because there's, it's hard to find a low stress route to cross from Roseland Creek up to Santa Rosa Creek without going on Stony Point, 
where people are sometimes driving 70 through the middle of town. Um, so I love that. I love it sound, all the direction that the, in which you're going sounds great to me, and especially looping in the car drivers, because I've had several incidents where the animosity between cars and bikes has been a little threatening to me. Yeah. But I also think as much as the cars need to be considerate, bikers need to be considerate. As I was driving here this morning, I saw two bikes come to the end of a long stream of cars waiting to turn left, come around, stop in front of the cars. And so they were going to block that whole lane of traffic mm -hmm. while they turn left, mm -hmm. which is understandable because you're vulnerable on a bike. It's also not particularly courteous to the cars. And so, you know, as we develop a more of a bike and walking culture, I think mm -hmm. dealing with those kinds of things is a great idea. So I appreciate that. As, as a yeah, short just, side, just a I'm sorry. Um, I would, we've mentioned the general plan a couple of times, particularly looking at events and, how, and the successes there. I would really love to see the active transportation yeah. plan explicitly reference yeah. the, the updated general plan so that people, I'm, whether what the average Santa Rosan is probably not going to read these things, but but people like I would like to see it. I'd like to know, yeah. and I'm sure there are others who. Mm -hmm. would, yeah, great. the so the 2035 general plan references the 2018 plan because every time we update this plan, I'm talking about, you have to do a general plan amendment to make sure that it's reflected. So it'll be you know back and forth. Yeah, it's funny that the general plan update is happening the same time we're doing another plan. So like. Everything just moves at the same time. <laughs> right. I, but yeah. it, would, it obviously would be best if the, the new active transportation plan was aligned with and, and really aiming yeah. for the same goals as the new general plan. Yes, definitely. And we could see that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Carol? I just wanted to say um, you used the word detours, addressing detours. Another way to look at it is detours are a joy. On yeah. my bicycle, I always take the detours and mm. I've been riding in cars with bicyclists. And why are we going this way? Oh, this is the way I ride my bike. And that's the way I get around Santa Rosa. And it takes you to the cool places. I don't want to get on my bicycle from point A to point B the fastest. Yeah. I, this, is, this is part of the joy of life. Yeah. And, it, and please consider that mm -hmm. and sharing that with yeah. people. It's a transition though. Uh, from a bicycle path to that detour, that's the real challenge. And signage at that point would be really helpful. So I want to just make a couple of comments. Um, I don't want to get too specific, I could. Um, but our role in many respects is dealing with not only creeks, but the, the transportation system, obviously, because we're probably the biggest and most significant source of off-street bicycle transportation and pedestrian transportation. So I, we play a critical role. So one, as you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, <laughs> but um, also there's the Creek Master, Citywide Creek Master Plan, which has what um, segments we are um, pursuing when we review projects, for example. We not only review the location of development, but we look at what uh, bike, or, uh, bike or pedestrian facilities are indicated on the plan, and then those become part of our recommendation. So that's a document that I assume is in the citywide general plan, but it's it's there um, somewhere. And um, so uh, Kevin mentioned a, a word um, that I think is really critical from our perspective, and that's connectivity and access to the creek paths and to the other um, paths off street. Um, and that I think is an opportunity that has not really been fully uh, realized. And one of those is that there are many channelized creeks, particularly in the western part of our city, that are not connected to each other, primarily because there are trails there, water agency trails, maintenance trails, but to get across Guerneville Road or to get mm -hmm. across College Avenue, not easy. And I will just say dangerous. Um, so we really need to look at connectivity regarding how we access uh, how we create a citywide bike path system. And it has not really been done. And I brought this up, I don't know how many years ago, but it is tough to make sure that you have safe crossings on those major streets. The other is the opportunity the Southeast Greenway is going to give us. 
because that's going to go across um, Franquette, Yalupa, and uh, Summerfield roads. And connectivity between the Prince Memorial Greenway and the, which is really a crossroads when you think about it, getting out to the Redota Trail, getting out to Santa Rosa Creek Trail, connecting to the smart bike path system. Mm -hmm. So all of this is one system, as you know, and that connectivity is just, at the moment, it's, uh, I think it's a challenge, but it's something we really need to do too. If we really want to get people off their, out of their cars, mm -hmm. I'll just leave it at that. I, I think, you, you, I think you know everything I just said, but uh, I hope you don't. I'll just say it. Up. Hope you follow up with all that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny because like there are, we, it's a huge city that we have, right? And we have so many people that live in it and we have a ton of projects. And so with like almost every suggestion you're making, I'm thinking, oh, we have this project and this project and this one <laughs> we're about to pursue and we applied for this grant. So good. one good example is um, there's a, a U.S. Department of Transportation grant that was for three years of technical assistance. And we applied, we heard um, a month ago that we're in the final stages. We advanced, but I haven't heard yet if we got it, but it would be three years of technical assistance to help us figure out the most low stress way to connect Prince Memorial Greenway with the future Southeast Greenway site. Oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. And it might be through Creek trails. It might also be through um, using like neighborhoods or arterials, or we don't know what it is, but we want to, we want that technical assistance wow. to figure out what's going to be cost effective, not crazy with the environment, um, but also is low stress and comfortable for people mm -hmm. to use. Did you say you got the grant or you're applying? For we heard that, so I already replied, we heard that we had advanced to the final stages, but we have not gotten the answer mm -hmm. yet. And, and this is for what agency, Department of Transportation? Yes. Great news. Yeah. Thank you. So there's a ton of stuff. Um, and then over here, you had mentioned um, that that lack of connectivity with Joe Redota, um, where Fulton comes down and Highway 12 is. There's mm -hmm. on April 17th, there's going to be a workshop uh, because right now we have a consultant working on a feasibility study to improve the intersection of Highway 12 and Fulton. Mm -hmm. And um, it's partially for um, vehicles because having a stopped intersection on a highway is extremely dangerous and we have collisions there. Um, but a, a large component of that project is how to increase bike ped safety. And it's both north south, but then it's also connecting Joe Redota. Um, and that actually is actively happening right now. So there is a workshop on April 17th at South Wright Charter School. It's, um, it's in the evening. Uh, if you Google, um, uh, Santa Rosa feasibility study, Highway 12 Fulton, that webpage will pop up for you. Um, so that is actually a really great opportunity if you're interested in that connection of Joe Redota and North-South bike ped connections to come and look at what some of the options are great. and provide feedback. I'd love if um, anyone's available to attend that. I'll be there. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Kevin? Uh, on that, along those lines, uh, you mentioned more guidelines from the state and federal governments. How about money from those <laughs> to accompany those additional guidelines? Is it is it there? It's there, but it's extremely competitive. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. we have a sure. ton of grants that we get, and all our departments get a ton of grants. But unfortunately, um, like the city budget is what it is, and so we really rely on grants to finish projects. And so. Um, there's two main issues with getting projects out and how slow they are, and it's money and it's staff time. And that's, yeah, okay, gotcha. <laughs> so <it> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a couple of things. Um, first of all, a couple of you were asking about moving your car. Yeah. I don't know if you yes. want to do that. It, it's this might be the moment. If yeah. you want to slip out, we could take or, a brief Or we have or... ultimate confidence in Susan. Yeah, I said I'd stand behind you. <laughs> say I could right. go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to suggest that after, but we are at the, maybe at the tail end of this item. Should we just, are there any concluding comments? Should I ask that? We have a couple minutes before I think you're, you're at risk of your really car. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We okay? Can yeah. I get some more stickers to pass out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Planning yeah. Planning yeah. I have some. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will also be coming to Planning Commission on the 11th, so I'll bring some there too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mark, can you pass her business yeah. parts? Oh, sure. Down. So yeah. we look forward to your return. Yeah, so thank yeah. you uh, yeah. very much. Yeah, really good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Be right back. Yeah. 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 I've got so many. Yes. It's amazing how fast they go.
us yeah, through this process. Well. <laughs> I didn't even realize I needed them until Dwayne's <laughs> way was <laughs> every day. Just want to just take a five like, okay, break or so, great. five or ten set of pages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Up right. Otherwise, they'll miss yes. the next item.
I don't believe I asked if there was any public comment on the last item. If there is anyone. This would be the moment. We're gonna move ahead to the FEMA flood risk mapping project part of the meeting. So um, I know we have uh, Claire and Gabe here today. Is that true? Whoever is here, please just introduce yourselves. I guess. <laughs> Oh, but in two. Oh, good. I thought that was a flood error. But it's a simple error. It's a watershed. That's the watershed, but this part is here. Are you in? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. Um, good morning, Tara Benoist, members of the committee. Um, you know, you know me. I think at this point, Claire Myers, um, stormwater and creeks manager. I'm joined today by Gabe Osborne, director of planning and economic development. Which I just learned. I think you said this is your first time at Waterways Advisory. My first time in my 27 years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not a new man in the city, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we're excited to be here today um, to speak about a topic that you know, might not be more relevant for the city's waterways. Um, we're here today to discuss FEMA's flood risk mapping project for the Santa Rosa Creek watershed. Um, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA as we all know it, um, is responsible for mapping our country's flood risk and for helping communities develop strategies for improving resilience. Um, in the face of flooding. So FEMA has identified the Santa Rosa Creek watershed um, in need of a map update. Um, so today we'll provide an overview of you know, what this project is, um, as well as the project benefits and impacts. We will also go over FEMA's project timeline and how our teams are working together. Um, you know, the Stormwater Creeks team, planning and economic development, and then we have Katie Osegura over here from um, communications and intergovernmental relations, how our teams are really working together to ensure really comprehensive public outreach. Um, we'll start by explaining the foundation of this project um, and really, you know, number one, what is flood mapping? This group might have more of a context for this, but most of the folks in the community do not. Um, so we like to start here, you know, and really basically it's FEMA's maps that show the risk of flooding um, within a given watershed um, and areas that have a, a high likelihood of flooding. More technically, FEMA is using model data um, to identify flood hazard areas that have a 1% risk of flooding in any given year. Um, you sometimes hear it referred to as the 100-year flood it doesn't mean it only happens once every 100 years. Um, it, it just means it has a 1% risk of happening in any given year. So what defines a flood? One inch, 12 inches at my house, what defines a flood? Um, I think, I mean, a, a flood is is really anything like that, that reaches your house. Um, you mean like to be within the flood plane? Well, I mean, for... FEMA to, to, to say you have a chance, a 1% chance of flooding, yeah. then what is a flood? Um, it, and because it, this is something that affects, you know, people's mortgages, uh, insurance and everything else like that. So, I mean, it, if it just floods a street that leads to their house, are they considered flooded or are, is their house have to be inundated? Is it defined? It, it, it has to do with whether it reaches your property line and then also whether or not it touches structures within your property. Okay. Um, I think you probably know a little bit more about this than I do. And it's also whether or not insurance is required. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. Is, you know, is also sometimes um, 
up to the, the insurance company, um, you know, of whether it's how close the flood waters get to your actual structure. Um, mm -hmm. But but what the flood map, FEMA's flood map does is it shows whether or not a given property or parcel, um, whether the 100 year flood waters will touch that parcel. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Um, so let's see, flood maps. Like I was saying, it, it identifies flood risk on a parcel by parcel basis. Um, these areas, you'll hear the term, um, they're designated as a special flood hazard area. Um, and then for this specific project, FEMA is just doing the Santa Rosa Creek watershed. Um, you can see the boundaries of the, this watershed in the purple line on your map. Um, so this is, includes Santa Rosa Creek and then all its key tributaries, which encompass most of the city of Santa Rosa. That's the, the gray, you can see the city boundaries in gray, um, as well as you know, some significant areas in Sonoma County. So the next question is why is it important? Um, and really, you know, in order for the city and property owners and for renters um, to make decisions on how to best mitigate risk, they need to know what their risk is. Um, so mapping areas of high flood risk, um, you know, can help community members make decisions about things like land use, um, purchasing insurance, you know, in case there is a flood. Um, and then within the city, you know, helping us decide, you know, what kinds of capital improvement projects are needed to get the water back in the creeks and not flooding the city. Yeah. Another question. So is there, I mean, I'm looking at Roseland, our, our priority equity community area. Do you guys have a brochure like this that covers that, which would be originally, I guess, from Colgan Creek? I don't know. Yeah, you know, we don't have a brochure because FEMA hasn't updated the Roseland or Colgan Creeks in my time since being at this city. Okay. Um, you, you know, they do it creek by creek. Um, the most recent one was Mark West, which only touched about five parcels at the top of the city. A few years ago, they did Todd Creek, which covered, um, but, you know, significant but, areas. Um, that's like, I think that's kind of outside of the city, mostly. Yeah, Todd Creek, again, yeah. touched like one. Um, and mm -hmm. so I know FEMA does have flood maps um, for the Roseland area. Um, but this, their project right now um, is only for the Santa Rosa okay. watershed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so why are, why are they doing it now? That's a good segue into why is FEMA doing this now? Um, and it's because flood risks change over time um, and better and new data becomes available. Um, so when new flood risks are identified or new data, FEMA will start the process of updating a flood map in a given area. Um, there's no set timeline for when they have to update a flood map, um, and they usually just do it when um, more accurate engineering information becomes available, either through a FEMA-funded restudy or when a community makes new information available to them. So um, Director Osborne now can, we can move into discussing some of the project impacts and also the benefits. Thank you, Claire. Um, as mentioned, my name is Gabe Osborne, I'm Planning and Economic Development Department. Um, I've not been in front of the waterways. It's great to make the connections and have the conversation, and we really appreciate any feedback provided as part of this process. Um, so as a project of this nature, there's always impacts and benefits. Um, in this particular case, when the flood maps are generated, what really FEMA looks at is the elevation of the water level in the creek, and as it rises, it exits the bank and it's going to hover at a certain elevation and move outside of that bank at that same elevation. So they determine, I think this is similar to the question that was presented, they determine the extent of how far that water will reach out, not necessarily the level and the depth of the water when it reaches out, just the extent. And then they define what they refer to as a special flood hazard area. So if a structure or a property falls into that boundary, they are in that hazard area. And what that means are really two issues for a property owner. The first is an insurance issue. So if you have a loan and a lender is in the mix, uh, you likely will be required through that lender to have flood insurance. If it's a government-backed loan, it's a guarantee. If it's not, it's a lender-to-lender -lender requirement. But generally, lenders will protect that interest and require flood insurance. If you do not have a loan on the property, it's optional. Um, for renters, it's optional. Um, so these are some of the educational components we go through is to let people understand the benefits of insurance and what the cost is and connect them to the appropriate resources. 
Um, from a building standpoint, when we have vacant lots or structures that are in that area, one of the common building requirements is what's referred to as raising the finished floor of ele elevation above the flood level. A uh, very common form of construction you see out at the river or on the East Coast when you still properties or raise them up, uh, they're taking the finished floor above that potential flood level. So that's a very common building code requirement. Um, also, when large developments come in where you had vacant land and now you're putting a large structure in that vacant land where it's displacing the water and essentially pushing the water potentially further out and affecting other properties, uh, developments have to go through a hydraulic study to determine the extent of that. So there's additional study requirements that go through when you're in a flood plain. Uh, some jurisdictions actually restrict development in those areas. The city center is a dozen. There's just more stringent requirements about how that development moves forward. Um, there's also temporary and ongoing impacts to staff. Um, obviously, because of the additional building requirements, there's more time that goes into the review of those applications. Next slide, please. So in addition to the impacts, there's also benefits. Um, the main benefit is it lets the community better understand the risk. Um, for many of us that are fortunate enough to purchase a home in Sonoma County, it's one of the biggest investments we can make. Uh, this puts people in a position where they can make the best decisions about protecting that investment. Um, it's also about where to live. Um, you know, people assess risks and they can determine from a renter standpoint if they want to be in that area and they can go in up front knowing what the potential risk is. Um, it also really helps us from a capital project standpoint. Once we understand the extent of flooding and watering exiting the bank, in a perfect world, you would never want that. So how do you form capital projects around those mitigation measures in the future uh, to keep that water contained in those waterways? Next slide, please. Um, and at this point, I'll hand it back to Claire to discuss the timeline. So the FEMA flood risk mapping is a multi-step, multi-year process um, that includes FEMA coordinating with local officials and technical staff um, and members of the public as well. Um, so Gabe and I will walk you through each of FEMA's steps in their timeline. Um, and I wanted to know too, it's important to know that throughout this process, the city also is communicating with a large number of groups and stakeholders um, including FEMA and local officials, our regional partners, and especially our impacted community members um, to help our community members navigate FEMA's process. Um, our teams work together with um, Katie's team communications to develop a really comprehensive outreach plan um, to, to help folks understand, um, you know, what's going on. I think, you know, I think our goal is that, you know, by the end of this process, anybody whose property is affected by the flood map knows well in advance, you know, before being informed by their mortgage lender, you know, and they have the opportunity to, to understand what's happening, to provide input into the process, um, to pr provide any concerns they have about, you know, the technicality of the studies that went into it. Um, so much like Tarina, you know, was telling you about her roadshow, we are on a parallel roadshow. Um, I was laughing, we were in the same room last night together, we'll be together next week. Um, we're really starting with hitting all of the different community groups and uh, agencies right now. Um, and then in the coming years, as we talk more about FEMA's process, we'll, we'll be getting into workshops with members of the public, having FEMA at workshops, just making sure that everybody has, who's impacted by this has the opportunity to ask any questions and um, have the best available information. So um, phase one of FEMA's process, uh, they call discovery. Um, they are just wrapping up this phase, um, like literally this week. Um, and, and this is a phase where FEMA gathers local, local flood data and information from the community and institutional knowledge that we have, um, you know, the city, Sonoma Water, Sonoma County. Um, so they do this in close coordination with the community to really prioritize their, their mapping and risk assessment. Um, and then also for mitigation and planning assistance in the future. Um, so as I said, the city, Sonoma Water and the County of Sonoma have been working together closely with FEMA to get them the data from the recently completed Santa Rosa Creek flood study. Um, and then FEMA will use that data along with their own data to, um, in their analysis. Which brings us to the second part of FEMA's um, phase two uh, analysis and mapping. We have just entered this step of their process. <clears throat> um, and this is really the part of the phase where, or the phase where FEMA is using information they gathered from the city 
combining it with their own data to develop what they call preliminary flood maps. These are not the final flood maps. These are their first attempt um, at what they think the extent of the floodplain will be um, for, again, for the Santa Rosa Creek watershed. Um, the analysis and mapping phase is estimated to take about a year. Um, so we anticipate either the spring or the summer of 2025 for them to release their preliminary maps. That takes us to phase three, which Gabe will go over. So really the first step when we see the maps is a preliminary map release that is given to the local jurisdictions. So we will have the opportunity as the city of Santa Rosa review at Sonoma Water. Comments are communicated as part of that process. Ultimately, it results in a draft map that's released to the public. And at that point, FEMA runs really point on the community meetings with the city participating in that process um, to let individuals know that these maps are coming. And an important piece to that <coughs> is there is actually an appeal process for this. As you can imagine, a project of this nature, FEMA isn't doing a site-by-site -site analysis of every single parcel to determine the uniqueness that may result in that map moving or not. So they actually have an amendment process that's part of their appeal where a property owner can submit essentially an alternate analysis saying that there are unique items to their parcel that would cause FEMA to rethink where the flood waters go. Um, that could be that the elevation of the home is different, it's been raised, there can be a variety of different pieces. Um, it's a very technical analysis and it often does require the services of a licensed engineer to prepare that. So as part of this process, we want to be sure that we're communicating with members of the public correctly so they understand that that 90 day window, uh, you really have to prepare for that upfront on the very end to get the, the appropriate resources in place to do that. Um, we're anticipating that the preliminary maps are released in summer of 2025. Okay. Yeah. Could a, a property owner, you know, see this coming and get, you know, detailed information about if you do this to your property, then this won't affect you? they can mitigate basically, does it give them an opportunity to mitigate before it becomes an official map? And they could, and I'll talk about it a little bit. There's actually a way, once it becomes an official map that you can actually mitigate after the fact too. Mm -hmm. um, so basically what it boils down to in this particular appeal process, since it's such a short window, you're likely attempting to convince FEMA that their findings are incorrect. Okay. So you're challenging their mm -hmm. data. Uh, once the map is generated, and we'll talk about this in the next slide, there is a map amendment process, um, and I'll just touch on that now. So um, what happens once that map goes into place is that there can be a variety of different things that cause those flood waters to change. One of the bigger being that there was a larger capital project that took place in the area that kept that water in the bank. Um, it could be that development takes place and they raise the site, so they do more of an on-site mitigation. You can submit for a map amendment. FEMA will review that to say, okay, you did, you've done these things and that's resulted in this changing and they will amend the map as part of that process. So after the preliminary maps, we get a letter of final determination. This is when the maps really go final. Um, there's also an effective date that goes along with that of the new flood maps. Um, the maps are available through FEMA's website. They are running point on this. We're really directing people to that. Um, community members, like I said, can amend the map during this process um, or for the life of the map. That's an important piece. So we'll educate individuals on what that process looks like as well. Um, so the flood map adoption is anticipated, and I know it's a, a fairly wide window at this point, and we'll neck this down as the process evolves, um, but we're anticipating spring of 2026 to spring of 2027 having the final maps in place. But you won't be able to advance the slide. Yeah, it's going to be an issue, issue with this dark. The We've had a technical slide. <laughs> Slide's not changing. No, it's black. Died. Good die. Um, yeah. Do you have the PowerPoint? Yeah. 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 Well, we can talk. Uh, let's just see. Oh, where did it go on here? I'm following you. Oh. So you, you just you just blocked out. Um, maybe uh, I can, if you can elevate me to a panelist. Oh, uh, you are. Um, I should be able to. Finish it? Yeah, go ahead. If you know that. Oh, okay. Which I mostly talked about communications. Um, I could talk a little bit more about. Um, I think is that I I, I should be able to do almost it. Almost the last slide, and we can talk a little bit more about communications. <laughs> uh, we have a slide that you will get up there. Um, we have. Um, you know, FEMA really takes the lead. This is this is their map update. You know, and it's our 
duty, you know, as, as the city of Santa Rosa to make sure that the members of our community know about this, but really it's making those language linkages between FEMA and us. So we have a slide with a number of the contact information for the different areas within FEMA. You know, if you have questions about the study, if you have questions about insurance, um, we um, have developed a, a website for the city of Santa Rosa um, that has much of the information you have in your brochure, but um, along with a, a pretty extensive FAQ, um, you know, I'm a renter, what does this mean for me? You know, how is climate change included in this? You know, anything that we could think of that a community member might want to know, do I have to have insurance? You know, will I be able to find the insurance? Um, and so, uh, so that is available. When, we can share that with you as well. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of resources, um, both within FEMA and within this city that we're making available to, to the members of our community. So, yeah. That was about it, did we miss anything? Um, yeah, the only thing I will add is at this point, obviously the communication is very high level. We don't know what the maps look like. Once we start understanding what the maps look like, it's more targeted focus on the individuals that are actually affected. Um, and then we have a more defined audience. So it really is understanding our, how our audience will evolve through this process and making sure that we're giving them the, the appropriate resources and the appropriate attention to make decisions, to, to get in touch with flood insurance programs. I know when insurance is a big issue in the state of California right now, and that's probably some of the major feedback that we'll receive um, is how do they obtain it? What happens if they can't afford it? all of these things will come into that equation and, and we'll do our best to make sure that we're informing people and correcting them, connecting them, excuse me, to the appropriate resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so this is the yeah. slide you were discussing. Oh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see the srcity.org forward slash FEMA flood mapping is the, the city's website. Um, there's a link on there too, to be notified, you know, to get on the list to be notified um, about future communication. Um, and then you can see on the left side, you know, FEMA's phone number, their email, um, their website. And, and I will add, they have been really great partners um, in the last year or so with communicating with them about data. Um, they, they, they're really forward thinking, you know, and volunteer to come out and be at the meetings. Um, so uh, it's, it's been really nice to see that. Mark, you had a question? Yeah, on the, the 90 day public comment uh, period, um, I know the city and the county have properties within here and probably state and federal also. Is that their process also to make comments and, or is there a different way that those agents, those governments are gonna be able to interface with FEMA? You know, they're actually, even prior to the 90 day public comment period, typically FEMA will reach out to the, the city and the county and some of the water um, to confirm, you know, their, okay. give them a chance to look at the data. So we do, we have done this, you know, this, because we've been working with them so closely, um, you know, during yeah. the discovery phase, um, we don't good. anticipate too yeah. many, you know, comments from the city, but um, we definitely do have that um, opportunity as well. Okay. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for the presentation. This has been really interesting, and I, it makes me more interested in that Santa Rosa Creek flood study. I see, Claire, you're the contact uh, on the website. Ha can we see that flood study online? You can. Um, well, you can see on, on the website, we have put links, or we will be putting links. I'm not sure if they're yet. Okay, I don't see it here, but. Okay, so then they, they're coming. So Great. we have been submitting the data from the flood study um, to FEMA in bundles um, over the course of three phases, basically to make sure, you know, first we did the hydrology, um, which is looking, you know, at the storms and, you know, how much water is coming and where is it coming. Um, had them look at that first to make sure that, our methodology was sound. Then we submitted hydraulics, which is, you know, what are the shapes of the creeks? What is the ground? What's the topography? Where is the water really going to go? Mm -hmm. um, and then just this week, we are submitting the final stage, which is all of the data. So the hydraulics and the hydrology reports will be put on that website um, so that members of the public can see. And within those, there'll, there'll be maps that show what our flood study shows as the inundation extents, um, mm -hmm. but we want to be really clear that those are our models that we have and FEMA's flood maps won't match those exactly because they're doing their own analysis. Um, you know, we don't expect 
tremendous diversions, but we just want to be clear that the public doesn't look at that and think, you know, this is exactly what the boundary is because they will change. Well, that, that, that leads to my other question, which is it, looking at that flood study, is this, is the city anticipating at this point any major capital infrastructure projects that are going to be needed to mitigate the risk? And and can you give us a like a thumbnail sketch in a minute of where those might take place? Yeah, it, it, we, yes, and we are, okay. um, and we you know we already have conversations that are happening with the Army Corps and looking at funding because this is going to impact a lot of individuals. It's pretty unusual for a flood map to come into an area that's so developed. Right. A new, a lot of these areas yeah. haven't been mapped before. Mm-hmm. And so typically you want to develop flood map prior to development, you know, so that you keep development out of it. Um, so it's really too important to us. I think one of the areas that we see the most flooding is actually downtown um, because the flood study has really highlighted the inadequacy of the East Street culverts mm-hmm. um, to accommodate a storm of that of that magnitude. And so the water is jumping the banks as it hits the culverts at East Street here. And we're seeing flooding mm. where we are, you know, okay. in City Hall. Um, a lot of the flooding is on the south side of the creek going down into the Luther Burbank area. Um, and that the highest in the city is down near Spencer Sisters where the freeway where 12 mm-hmm. and one effectively acts as like a berm right. and mm-hmm. keeps um, the floodwaters there. Mm-hmm. And so that that's one of the major, you know, projects that we are anticipating needing. How are we going to deal with that's, that? That's helpful. And is there, are there any discussions in that context of the whole idea of daylighting the Creek under city hall? And there's a lot of discussions. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, you know, that's something I know my team is very interested in, you know, and, um, so are we, yeah, from a flood <laughs> mitigation standpoint, you know, it's okay. like, we got that language into the, um, the general plan update, you know, the importance of daylighting. Um, and so that's something that we're looking at and we're looking at, like I said, with the army Corps. Um, and then also Sonoma Water, who's been a really important partner and, you know, co-funded the, the flood study. Um, they are actually in the process right now of doing a hydraulic analysis of what it would look like because the, the culverts are their uh, infrastructure. They're not actually the city's infrastructure. They're part of the central Sonoma Watershed project and Sonoma Water did them. So they are uh, doing a hydraulic analysis to look at what would happen if they removed the culverts, you know, what would the downstream impacts be? Would there be more flooding, you know, downstream? Um, and how, you know, how would that impact in the bigger sense? And so um, it's something that we're in close communication with them about this. Great, thanks. Yeah. And Clay, just to note, those um, the Central Sonoma Watershed Project is listed in like downline along with the hydrology and hydraulic supports. Oh, great. Sorry. Okay. Great. Great. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Oh, good. Are there other questions anyone has? Thank you. Very informative. Yeah. 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 We learned a lot today. Yeah. 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 This is great. Any questions, comments by the audience? So, unless there are other questions, comments, suggestions, I will uh, close this meeting, adjourn it for the day. And uh, yeah, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Thank you. I just adjourned it, but go ahead. Go right ahead. Um, I was wondering, uh, at our next meeting or two, we could get some updates on projects we've reviewed in the last couple of years to see their um, progress. I'm thinking specifically of the not anymore apartments out on Highway 12, close to Mission, the storage Mm -hmm. unit buildings. Mm -hmm. Interested in that one. Also interested in the Brookwood Medical Center um, project, mm-hmm. uh, anything that involves planting and pedestrian access, uh, not so much the cell towers, although the cell towers may be of more interest to the neighborhoods that they're close by, which um, might also be of value to us to hear about. Uh, and the other thing is, um, I still look fondly uh, back at the Colgan Creek field trip we took 
And the um, woman on her, I don't know if she was on foot or a bicycle, but went to Steve Brady and said, I need more poop tags. It's yeah, like, whoa, right. there's a volunteer out here. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. volunteer network that exists for the Creekway specifically, I don't know if there's an overview on that, but to hear about the different creeks that are um, supported by volunteers and how the city can support these volunteer efforts mm -hmm. more across the board, especially um, with Prince Memorial Greenway being active and Southeast Greenway coming on board and it also has creeks. How do we foster this sense of community volunteerism and um, the city's um, ability to facilitate and uh, coordinate these efforts? Any good points there? Yeah. Thank you for adding that. Yeah. Um, maybe we can talk about how to do that, but that is an important component of what we're trying to accomplish. Do you have any questions about that, Sue? I hey, don't. I, I've already handed it off to Claire. <laughs> <laughs> we, have in, yeah, we, we have a lot of metrics. We track everything. So right. we know the number of volunteers, we know the number of hours, we know their students, adults. Um, and so, and we actually have a report, so we can come back and maybe get Kyle Spalberg, who is the um, community CSP, what that stands for, the Creek Stewardship Program Coordinator, um, and we can give you all the details about that. <clears throat> that would be great. There's also the interface with Parks Department too, because of um, kind of a, a legal ambiguity, I guess you'd say, in the Prince Memorial Greenway area. Mm -hmm between land owned by the city, land owned by Hyatt, and so on. So <clears throat> that is a topic of concern. So thank you for your presentation. Um, I think we're all wrapped up for the month and we may have a meeting in April or, and or May. I think I think there will, it's almost definite for April. Okay. And, okay. and I'll try and get some update. I, yeah, I'll get some updates for you on the projects when we come back. Great. And I will not be at the April meeting. And if there's a May one, I have to miss that as well. So Art will be taking my place here as chair for those meetings. So for Art, okay. we're calling on you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you. Uh, Enjoy the rest of the day. Try. <laughs>